Having the first week, I think, was not really a problem because, okay, things were not that, not going as expected because we really had high expectations. But at the same time, if you can overcome like bad periods, bad times, bad games, then you know that as a group, if everyone gets a good motivation and like keeps their heads up, then we're probably going to go far. It could have been a better start for sure, but. It's not really affecting our plan for uh, going forward, and it shows how good we can perform starting now. So, I mean, last night I was just staying up, right? And I was figuring out what the best way to implement, uh, I mean, our team structure is, right? And uh, I think that basically everyone communicating and just really setting the expectations for everyone is super important first, right? You guys expect too much out of Bora and um, the expectations weren't set by the coaching staff of what you guys need to do for your roles, right? So, I mean, I was talking to Bora and Peter today about like, um, how shot calling should go and how to improve our communication flow, right? So a good example for you, Bjergsen, was last year. You played on a team where you had to play with Dyrus, Lustboy, and Tintorin, and they weren't really effective in terms of communicating, right? So you had to basically, you had to, you had to basically overreach and shot call for not only their lanes, but their roles, right? And that's not something you should be doing, but you should also be like looking for opportunities. But for, we're gonna assign like specific things for each person, but overall, everyone should shot call. And I want to develop this from the ground up because um, I, don't, I don't want our team to be built around just one shot caller because I, A, I think that it's too intensive for that person. And B, I don't think that that's like the right way to build a team. I think that everyone should understand how to carry through their role. And then the team as a whole should make a decision. And there should be like a primary shot caller that that's like <laughs> makes the final call, right? But everyone else should be like secondary shot callers where there's a good communication flow. The second thing I want to talk to you guys about is like team culture and atmosphere and expectations of coaching staff and players, right? So, I mean, just talking to Peter and Bora and some of the players, um, you guys get along really well. You guys are all friends. And you guys have a lot of fun with each other. But uh, one thing that I heard and noticed was that you guys don't really like give each other feedback or criticism because you guys expect that from the coach, right? Um, and that's, that's just not how I, um, I want our team to be. When you guys see something that's wrong with your teammates, and your coaching staff doesn't see, I think that you guys should bring it up to your teammates because that's, uh, uh, that like, I think that it would make a more productive environment as long as you guys deliver it right. As long as people don't take it the wrong way, I think that's like the best way to, to do it and to fix it. I don't want you guys to quickly judge your peers and also the coaching staff. I want everyone to put their best foot forward. Even though things look really grim, we did really bad, we performed less than expected, right? And I want you guys to give your coaching staff and your peers the opportunity to mess up to improve. Because if we're in an environment where if someone messes up and they quickly get judged and they get quickly get put in the shit list, then no one's gonna want to experiment. No one's gonna want to really strive to like learn and do better and experiment in scrims. Because people are gonna mess up. And I mean, I think that what, what I really messed up on this year was I didn't set expectations for everyone. I didn't sit down and spend enough time with you guys early on. So, I mean, we're one week in still, it's not too bad. I think we can still fix it. Um, but we have to really just start from the ground zero and make sure that everyone understands the role. But no more playing reactive. We had a huge problem with this last year too. Yeah. So when Andy sat down, um, it was the Monday. So it was the day after we won Risk Team Liquid. And he's, he basically just reset everybody and he said, okay, let's restart, you know, I think everyone had a misperception of the coaching staff and, you know, the team culture is kind of not productive 
And you know, let's just all like, let's just put it behind us and then this is how it's gonna be moving forward. And when he talked, like, Reginald commands absolute authority when he talks. So it's super easy to listen to him and be, and be on board. So I was just instantly just like, okay, like this is what we're gonna do. And um, I don't think anyone was toxic or super negative or anything. It was just, it felt super good every day because it was just like, hey, like, let's try this next time. Let's sit down and get vision and push up. That's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. But, but that's the, okay, like we before doing. then we were talking about like, can we do something top? And I was like, no, 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 no. Let's just, we need to go mid. Why I wanted to take this wave is because then they cannot make use of this wave and push down this tower. Yeah. yeah. And it's just important that like, uh, we yeah. understand what we should be doing. Like, yeah. Peter understood, but it didn't seem like, we should already know that we should be going to mid side while we're pushing the wave, not like as a reaction to like, oh no no, we can't push top, we should go mid. But yeah, by doing this, we're forcing them to catch up the top wave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, it was actually something I told Andy also before we made the new roster is that I want a team where everyone feels like uh, the other players in the team want to improve them, and if they ever criticize them, that's something they want to take and improve on. They don't want to just be <laughs> upset over what this player said about them, and all these things. I want really. A camaraderie, but also just a productive work environment, and that's something we didn't have in the beginning. But Andy reinforced it in a meeting, and also told us a lot of things that we should be working on to be a better team. And it just instantly motivated everyone. Everyone played much better in the next week of scrims because everyone felt like we had a focus, we really had a plan, and everyone just knew what to do moving forward. I know. That's disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? No, it's Dennis P. Dennis P. Looks weird. Oh. Oh. Don't play with your food. Your pee pee. Disgusting looks weird. catering. Never ordering this again. Do you didn't even order it. <laughs> no way you didn't get it again. Do someone want some more bins? Mm, yes, yeah. please. There's some guy. Yes, you, you want more? Okay. Is there more? Yeah, you want? Beans you like are such a European beetroot? thing. I feel like nobody in America eats beets. I never eat beets. Is there beans. more, bro? Did you go to some peas? Inner, inner peace. Inner peace. Ah, 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 ah. Ah, 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 ah. Trader Dice Cookie Pins. That's so good. Ah, 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 ah. Best part. You, you know what Peter has now? Say it, dude. Inner peace. The big <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding, guys. It's a one entry. We're <laughs> getting he played Dungeons and Dragons here. What did you try to play it online, Kevin? Oh, I played it online. And Kevin time. was using literally an hour to like create his character. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> nah, I'm like, okay, he's like, I'm currently rolling my, my hair color. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> shit. The color of my t-shirt, <coughs> yellow. Yay! <laughs> Damn, this is taking forever. No, dude, and then you roll shit. each stat. Like, mm -hmm. so long. How long does it take like, to play a Dungeons and Dragons game? Some of them take years. Or is it one, that, or is it one that you just keep playing? I think, yeah, some of them can take years. Uh, it's like just a whole story. You just, just group up with your friends whenever everyone's on. Do you make the story or...? Yeah, the DM makes it. So they plan out the whole the thing. Dungeon Master. That's a guy. The fucking Dungeon Master. Just yeah. a guy making it Is that you, Kevin? Up? No. Kevin has sleep that's nice, just thinking about the next move. Like, <laughs> what? <laughs> what am I going to make him do this? <laughs> okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put a trap here. You walk into the castle. <laughs> you get ambushed by a dragon. What do you do? I, I would just kill everyone all the time. <laughs> like, alright, now you're dead. <laughs> Nothing you can do about it. Wait, people do that? I don't know. <coughs> no, the, you can't? <laughs> the Dungeon Master can't just kill people off? I mean, why would you want to play with someone that does that? <laughs> You'd be like... You'd does the Dungeon like, Master have a character himself, or is that all he does? Usually they have like a... an NPC character... that is like their character, but... they use the NPC to like further the story. So it's kind of their character. Let's see. Holy crap, this sounds very complicated. Well, this is really like, Kevin, should... give me five bucks, and then you'll be like, no, nah. I'm like, alright, you're dead. <laughs> I'm not gonna play anymore. I'm gonna do a Spongebob dungeon, dude. Oh my like, god. I'm fucking hey, Squidward. You just make, you just make the revenant. <laughs> Kevin is attacked by a bear. He gets left for dead. Oh, no. So, when I joined the team, and then realized what the roster was gonna be, with all these like stars from other teams, I honestly didn't feel much pressure. It was more like, just a pressure to perform to my own expectations because I feel like I was super good and can like match the others and like 
their star status. So in terms of replacing Darius, um, when I first became like a top laner, when I first role swapped, I looked up to him a lot because he was one of the best in NA, and at the time, he never lost to anyone, and he like just was one of the strongest players on TSM. He just wasn't as confident as he was before, but I, I still think he's like a good person, and he is like just a legend in the game. But personally, I'm here to like make my own legend. This sounds super generic in a way, but like most of the time, right, people play on stage differently than, uh, than scrims. So just make sure we play the same way we play in scrims. And obviously we want to win, but like, we also want to get better, you know? So everyone just needs to be in the mindset of like, it's okay to mess up and we can still come back. Because if people play differently on stage, then it defeats the whole purpose of practicing for it. Yep. It's yep. super generic, but like, it's the same mistake that like, I've made a thousand times in my career, so. Yeah. Don't be afraid. Don't overstay. Well, yeah, don't overstay, <laughs> but don't be scared. Don't overstay. <laughs> That's our biggest mistake, too. Because I think naturally everyone just plays more passive on stage. So mm -hmm. I think we should come out at a decent balance on stage. At least I'm hoping so. Yeah, like one of the big things is that if you fall behind, you tend to play a lot more passive. Like, I'd rather have like a good game like where we just like play to win and come yeah. back than like slowly lose, you guys know what I mean? Like, yeah. a lot of the times people like get killed a couple times and they just like, they wait until the enemy messes up, right? But like at a high level, if we're playing against a really good team, they're always just gonna close up the game. So yeah. we have to be able to make plays to come back into the game. Not kind of let them like slowly take vision away, slowly take all the dragons, slowly take all the towers and just like stay in on towers, so. What? No, it's like, we think the exact same way. Now it's about executing, you have to do now. Do it for Andy. Do it for Andy. Do it for yourself. Hashtag do it for Reggie. Or you should pick up a trash can, write trash on it, and tweet it to the AD carry. No, we're gonna do it yourself, Andy. <laughs> no, I'll, okay, I'm gonna put I'm Immortal on the trash can and cross with the I'm. Or uh, Immortals and cross with the I'm in front. And you should take it in the same light as you do with Peter Victor. Alright, I'll do that after the match. I'll never forget the Peter Victor, dude. It's yeah, on my Twitter for a while. Yeah, it's one of my bookmarks. Yeah, I love it. You got 6,000 views, it's my biggest stream of all time. <laughs> <laughs> I retweeted it at the perfect time, dude. I saved for two years. Dude, I can't believe you bookmarked it for two years. Oh my god. I was like, oh wow. I bet you Peter waited a really long time for that. I did. Every day I woke should, up. Should I tweet that he waited a really long time for that? Nah, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Think about your career, right? Think about the funniest thing you've ever tweeted. That's like, if that goes into like the highest one. Whatever, dude. I started free so and now I regret it. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna figure out who can be the top dog of North America can match energy at 3-0 and leave their mark on North America. Here we go. Arm into the damage and an ignite as well. Bjergsen's going for this play. Pomelter has to not land the E. Here comes the team. He's going to ult himself to heal. Now Huni is in on a Svensk scare and pops the ulti. How good's it going to be? Go Let's go Hey, Dennis, run One of you recall. One of you recall. And then the rest can push. Nice. Nice. I'm gonna put. Oh, I'm gonna back you. Push. Okay, I'll push. We might find out this time around. Huni and Hans are in a bit of a battle, and Huni knocked into the air to make this charm. And of course, he's gonna rate for that one with repost. Now Huni still in a bad spot. Knocked around. Shanna saves it away. Oh my word! Immortals keeping it alive. They'll kill Yellowstar as well. Adrian is a superhero. A two for zero to Immortals. Takes a lot of damage for just that though. Ulti comes across, only hits two, but a second charm on a Pobelti. They don't quite kill him off though, and now Rainover is in the anger zone. Kills off one already. Fiora, this is I'm stunned. Call, Fiora, 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 Fiora,
You have red buff, Kevin. You have red buff. He has buff. no flash. He has no flash. Yo, yo, I'm not gonna chase. Wow, Hanser. Yeah, I mean, oh, and he stops again. Brutalizing Hoody right now. Again, just shade stunning him. Dear Lord! Hanser! This is actually super dangerous because Hooney's up in four seconds, so the split push advantage has been forfeit. TSM also at half health from this Baron. This is certainly a fight. Pope Belter has ultimate. Here he goes! He's gonna get this deal. Rainover is in, and the spike goes to Rainover! That's an Immortals Baron and a kill, and they keep going. Hanser, Dublin, both being attacked. Double does in fact go down. Hooney gets a third kill. This is a slaughter. A huge mistake by TSM. The turn from Immortals, so impressive, and they make the plays to win this game if they can take down the Nexus against Hanser. I think it's gonna be enough. It's not a lot of damage, but there are super minions and there are no respawns. This should be the game. Back comes Rain over. Down goes the Nexus. Immortals, three and O. Oh. Wow. We'll have to see that catch at the end by the Cole end. Belter, but it's just... It's not a big deal. Like, we're, we're, if you compare last week to this week, I'm so much happier. Yeah, yeah this is a big improvement from last week, for sure. It's like, like last week? Last week we were shit. Yeah. This week, we're, I, I felt like we are actually in control and we are actually doing things where like, if you look at the difference, it's like way better. Or yeah. making plays. Yeah, now it's just nitpicking small things that we can change in like I mean, I'm this. I'm even happy about the Baron thing, right? If the Baron thing was called, because the thing is that like, those are the type of moves that will win you a game or lose you the game, right? If you're in a really like intense match, knowing when to rush Baron will make like the difference between like a good team yeah. and a great team. Like had we rushed Baron like three seconds sooner with everyone there, we would have gotten it and we would just one shit like that. Yeah. So if we can optimize and always rush Baron at the right time and get really good at it, then we would win like most of our games. Like if you look at um, last year, right? Uh, you know how Cloud9 came back from ninth place and going to Worlds? The, if you look at their gold, um, gold differences, uh, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, there was no difference. And then uh, their lane CS was no difference and damage done wasn't any difference. But uh, after 25 minutes, they got 70, over 70% of the Barons in a rush. So like, just like by knowing when a rush Baron is like super instrumental. Um, obviously, like we really messed up this time, so I'm happy that we messed up this time. Then you know playoffs. Yeah. Nobody gives a shit about who wins the first two weeks of spring. Nobody uh, ever gave a shit about who wins I mean, the first I think two weeks of spring. I obviously think like we should take it harder on ourselves for losing, right? But like, do we just need to transition that to like a positive thing and like focusing and getting better? Like, I really think like the big thing to learn today was like learning how to rush Baron every single time flawlessly. Like if we can get that down, we'll be a really good team. We put up a good fight against them until we throw out Baron. But you know, we just learned. We're like confident that if we keep working the way we're doing right now, we will surely be a strong team and hopefully that will be top one in NA. You should definitely eat it. Yeah. I think. I think you should for sure eat it. I would eat it. Yeah. I'm already eating it. Same. Normal spot in the back. Uh. Wait, why do I have this part? Look, I need somebody else to play this game. Oh, is that so for the fridge? More powerful allies. Yeah. More powerful allies. Just do Is it fun? Oh, uh, it's starting to get fun. So it's like Hero Surge, basically. Yeah, I don't actually never played Heroes Charge or Summoner's War. I've just seen it. Oh yeah, you but just they're all the same concept. Yeah, it basically is. It's like this is fight. the most addicting thing you ever. You go through quests or like the levels. Yeah. You get stronger characters. You yeah. upgrade them. You like promote them. Yep. Yeah. Basically, you promote them. Do you get gear? Yeah. In in Heroes Charge, you get gear and then you use the gear to promote them. Yeah. Exactly. Really? What the hell? This is a, like a and carbon copy, except it's Star Wars. But I I heard. Like, Lena was trying to explain to me that Clash of Clans is actually really strategic or something. I have no idea if that's true she or not. She played it for like two years. Yeah. I she guess it's committed, to justify it. She's a committed Clash of Clans player. Damn, Lena's a committed phone game player all I around. Know. She just has two phones and she plays two games at the same <laughs> time. Are you serious? She plays Hero Charge on two different phones, on two different, like, saves. That is absolutely <laughs> terrifying. This is the first phone game I've ever played. Now I see how little kids... 
Dude, if I had a little kid, I would never let him download some of these like random <laughs> games. Cause they're like, just so like, addicting. Yeah, oh. dude, if I, if I had like less self-control, I would have already blown like my life savings on this game. <laughs> <laughs> Leader here, they had wanted to put Billy in. That was uh, the choice of the team, more so than than a requirement of them. And Dignitas think this could be the roster that leads them to further success as they approach maybe three and one with a win here. Billy Boss. He wants to keep going because he's turning mini. And he's got two teammates coming up. The Hanser with Sven Skarin and Bjergsen joining the team. Of course, they are spotted here, but the Danes are coming to make sure Hanser gets this kill. And finally, TSM can get their own kill in the top lane. And Hanser, first blood. All right, all right. I'm moving here. Hey, we can catch Ezreal too. No, look at the star. Look at the star. Yo, I'm on Lux. I'm on Lux. I'm on Lux. Lux is going on me. I'm flashing. I just flash out. Lux, 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 Lux. Nice, nice fucking play, Kevin. Good fucking shit, dude. Sin. Two zero and three, and TSM getting farther and farther ahead. Things are all falling apart right there. Four team Dignitas getting caught in the jungle, and despite Shifter's best efforts to turn it around. He is caught by Hauntzer making a roam up, and it's just going from bad to worse here. It is getting worse. Key right now forced to run away from the Glacial Fissure. Not going to stop him. Double if takes him out easily. Billy Boss also with TP to save a teammate, but only comes in to die. How far can Double if really even go? They're trying to pick up these kills. They haven't got anything just yet. Poppy knocked down bot lane tier two. Now she's. I'm, I'm going to go Lux. Lux, 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 in. I have to. I have to back. Yo, we can win this. We can win this. Lux, Lux. That's from the flash. No, 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 looking no, for an no, ult. No, no, no. Ezreal? That's from the flash. That's from the flash. I have a stun, Kevin. I'm taking it in. Picked up. End the game. I think we can end oh, it. No, yeah. no, no. I have ult. Yeah, we can end it. Like, packaging. We don't have waves. The next kill as well. Two to zero. Out goes Apollo. Sent right back to the foul. Then he goes down as the third kill comes through on a shifter. Kiwi Kid now forced to flash and get away off the ultimate. But that's going to be enough for TSM. And like clockwork, it only took 28 and a half minutes. TSM. Tying the guitars two and two. Yeah, so when all was said. What do you think about the like, game, Sven? We lost. <laughs> <laughs> so sorry. Uh, we should all pack up. It's just against a team that makes no plays, yeah. it just feels so. But it yeah, was it's like climactic. It was yeah. like us in the first week. Yeah, we're we're reactive. The same. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't participate in very many fights at all. But that's okay because all that matters is winning, right? It's it's way better to um, take a backseat role and you don't have to be the carry all the time if it results in like a super clean win like that versus trying to involve yourself in every play and then prolonging the game because you're not pushing waves when you should or you're not taking objectives when you should. So it's um like the truth is that not everyone can be a carry in a single game you know some people are the carry and some people have to play the bitch role where you're just you're pushing waves and you're absorbing enemy jungle pressure and you're um focusing on objectives and <clears throat> i played the game for long enough you know five years to understand my role in each game and not just like have this static like oh i have to carry every game sort of mentality i think just overall as a team we played the map really well and it was just it was a clean game i think um Everyone was really happy that we managed to have such a clean game, not just win a game, because that was something that we just couldn't do in the past. Well, yeah, there's definitely no doubt. Ponster played super well this last weekend, and I think he, he's just like super competitive. Like he, he just fucking hates losing just like everyone else. So we, we all like kind of take that energy and use it really well. And I think Ponster has like a lot to prove. You know, he came on this team and he's on with like four players who I guess they're just more popular than him. And so he, he feels like he needs to, well, I think he probably feels like he needs to step up. So, I mean, I really like playing with him. And um, when it comes to like his comparison to Dyrus, I think he's definitely like already kind of filled those shoes. This week against Dignitas, um, our game was a lot cleaner. It was definitely the kind of game we were hoping to have in our first three games, but unfortunately that didn't happen. Um, I think it was a really good demonstration of the fact that we've um, learned to assign resources correctly rather than where uh, an individual player thinks it should be assigned. So, as I said earlier, one of the things I'm fundamentally against is a team that always plays to a particular player. I think the way the game should be played is it should be played to a particular point on the map depending on where your advantages are. And I think that the fact that Doublelift uh, in our game against Dig was only, only participated in four kills I think is a really good sign that not everybody on the team has to carry all the time. And I think it's important that we remember that 
Since we'd accumulated such a large, large lead on the top side of the map at the early part of the game, there was no reason for Doublelift to, to have to carry. And I think it also shows progression in Doublelift that he doesn't feel like he has to be the kind of player that has to go off and get a million kills every game. And I think it's exciting for us as a team because it shows we're more cohesive, we recognise where our advantages are and we play towards those advantages and we don't try and overpush the lead.